Hello, welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, 8th of June today, my birthday. So it's not every day you turn 25, and uh, as it's my birthday, I get to do puzzles all day. So this is, uh, this is a treat for me. I've got the puzzle on screen. Now this puzzle has, I think it's probably caused the most controversy amongst our testing community. Um, and I think it's, it's changed a little bit. The puzzle was published on Logic Masters Germany. Uh, a while ago and I think it's been slightly amended the rules have changed a little bit but I am assured that this puzzle is unbelievably good um, and it has a very strange rule set so I'm going to read those out to you in a, just a second um, and it's by I should tell you who it's by of course it's by Mad Mahogany um, that's the pseudonym but the, the real name is Madaf Sankarana Ryanan um, and um, yeah, Madoff has been publishing puzzles now on Logic Masters Germany for a few a few weeks, I've noticed, to rave reviews. Uh, this one gets five stars for difficulty, though, so it might be a long video. Uh, anyway, what else do I want to mention? We've had a terrific response to Christoph Seliger's um, uh, video on how to set a Thermo Sudoku. That is available free for you guys on Patreon at the moment, so uh, do check that out. Uh, it's, it's, um, a lot of you making some very kind comments about that. Uh, anything else I want to mention? Uh, there was something. Oh yeah, big thank you to those of you who've got in touch with us about the possibility we might stream on Twitch at some stage. I mean, it's it's not imminent because we have to learn how to do it, but we, we are thinking about it. And many of you were kind enough to give us some suggestions on how to go about it. So um, yeah, thanks very much for that. And uh, watch this space. Now, let me read the rules of this puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. The, type, the marked diagonals must contain the digits one to nine exactly once each. The inequality sign points to the lower of the two cells it connects. So that's that. That's point. So this cell has got to be lower than that one. The black dot indicates that one of the connected cells must be double the other. Okay, so one of these two is double the other one. This is the complicated bit coming up. The taxicab distance between two cells is the minimum number of orthogonal moves required to go from cell A to cell B. In the completed grid, only the red cells contain digits that are a taxicab distance away from another cell containing the same digit. OK, I think I understand that, but let's read the rest of the rules. Of the set of digits 1 to 9, only a subset whose sum is less than 15, can appear in the red squares. Right, so those two last bits of the rules are very, very unusual. So we've got this concept of a taxicab distance. So let me just try and see how if I understand that correctly. So this square, that can't be a 5, is what I think that's saying. Um, now, why do I say that? Well, it's because this 5, if I understand the rules, what's the minimum number of orthogonal moves I can move from this square to this square in? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But as these two would therefore be connected by a taxicab distance, they should both be red, and they aren't. So this one cannot be a 5. That's what I, how I think this works. So, so there's loads of weird stuff that pops into my mind when I think about that. So one is completely unaffected by the taxicab uh, rule because um, one could never be a taxicab distance away from itself anyway because that would be one orthogonal square which is always going to be in the same row or column as the one. Um, whereas let's have a think about a nine just for the sake of exposition. So if this was a nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, that square obviously isn't a 9, but let's go a bit shorter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this square couldn't be a 9. That square, ah, I see. So it sort of goes in along a sort of bishop's move in chess type thing. That is very, very odd. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So those two, presumably, and these... Goodness me, so this is going to take some incredible scanning to try and work out what on earth is going on in this puzzle. Now, there is one other bit of the rules I just want to have a think about quickly. Of the set of digits 1 to 9, only a subset whose sum is less than 15 
can appear in the red squares. Right, so let's let's imagine there was some let's put some numbers in the red squares. Let's see if that was a one, two, three. Can I do this? Is this gonna work? It might work. Um I mean obviously these are not taxi cab distances away from each other, so this is not right. So and then we'd have to fill this one in. Right, so now what we've got here, which numbers are already in the red squares? Well, of the subset, of the set of digits one to nine, it's only the numbers one, two, and three that are appearing. One, two, and three add up to six. And the sum of all of the, right, so this square then couldn't be a nine, because if it was a nine, the subset of digits appearing in the red squares are ones, twos, threes, and nines. That adds up to 15, and we know that the sum must be less than 15. So I suppose the critical thing to note there is what we're not doing is adding up all of the cells. We're not adding three plus one plus one plus two plus two plus three. Obviously, that's always going to breach this 15 total. It's just the subset of the digits. Right, I understand that. Okay, so with that, <laughs> do have a go at this puzzle. It's a five-star puzzle. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a bit of a brain bender. Um, click on the link under the video to play along. It's a long introduction today, but never mind. With that, let's get cracking. Um, so, how do oh, that's not right? I'm going to delete that. That's a. How do we do this? Um, I'm not actually sure how to even begin to start this puzzle. So, one, two, three, four. Ah, so that can't be a five because that would be a taxi cab distance from this, which is not a five. So, those two can't be fives, that can't be a five. Loads of them can't be fives, but it doesn't really tell me what they can be. So what do we do here? These can't be relevant because they're, they've, this feels to me like stuff that's been added to disambiguate at the very end of the puzzle. You can't start with the Kropke type clues. We've got to figure out something about the red squares. Um, now, what is that thing or things? Uh, sorry about this. <laughs> um, now, come on. Um, I feel a bit lost here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm meant to be doing at all. This right. This number is on the diagonal. So this square is the most restricted square in, in the grid, isn't it? That's That at least sees three given numbers. And this can't be a one because it's red. And we know that if it was if it was a red one, that would imply that there was a one that was a taxi cab distance away. And we know that that's impossible. So this square, ah, this square can't be a three because there's no no possible red square that's three away from this one. This one is one, two, three, four away. So this actually is a bit more restricted than I thought. This can't, this can't be one, two, three, four, or five. And to be six, that means that there would have to be a red cell six digits away. Now, oh, one, two, three, four, that one is six digits away. Right, so that can be a six. Let's put that in. Can it be a seven? Yes, that one seven away. One, two, three. Yeah, that's seven away. So it can be a seven. Can it be an eight? Oh, I don't think it can be an eight. That isn't that eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, so that's useful. It can't be eight either. So this this feels better, doesn't it? At least I'm able to restrict this this digit. Um, Obviously, it can't be an 8, because if it was an 8, that 8 should be red, and it's not. So this, can it be a 9? 
uh, one, two, three. So if this is eight cells away, this would be nine cells away. But we need to get a red nine. So if we, so this is the bishop's diagonal. Ah, so it's going to hit that one, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, it does bother. So this can be six, seven, or nine. Um, right. Well, let's look at this one because this one at least can't be the same as that one. And in fact, that one, is that eight away from that again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it is. So this one, and this one can't be three either. Look at that, there's no, there's no red square three away from this one. So this has to be, can't be four, five, can it be five? Well, that's five away. But that, that can't be five as well because they'd be in the same row. So we need a different red number that's five. One, two, three, four. That's six away. No, I don't think this can be five. I don't think there's a red square five away from that. So, so this, this needs to be six, seven or nine as well. Can't be eight because of that eight. So can it be six? One, two, three, four, five. It can be six. That could be a six. Seven. Well, the seven's going to hit that one again, isn't it? Yes, it does. So it can be seven. Can it be nine? Yes, th these two are the same distance away from that one. That's eight, nine. So this, so this is a six. Well, these two squares are six, seven, and nine in some order. But they can't be ah right okay but now we can use the 15 constraint because yeah this that's actually incredibly powerful because these can't be the same and they can't add up to 15 because they, the sum needs to be less than 15 for the subset of digits in the red square so you can't have a nine you can't have a 9 in either of these because then the total will be at least 15. So you can't have a 9. These are a 6, 7 pair. My phone's buzzing. It's Mark. No, I'll ignore it. Um, and how do I make it turn off? Turn off. There we are. Um, no, I can't interrupt this anyway. This is absolutely fascinating. So this is a 6, 7 pair which means that we've got two digits on the red squares that sum to 13 and I can't put a one on a red square so I can't make the sum 14 so six and seven are the only digits that appear on red squares that seems to be the logical inference that I need to draw from that that is incredibly surprising but okay what if, if I've got to populate all of the red squares with sixes and sevens then oh right okay so this square is interesting so this square and this square have to be the same number because this square and this square are different numbers. So these two squares are the same. They are either, well, they're probably sixes, aren't they? Because they are six apart. Four, five, six. So if they are sevens, is that possible? They've either got to both be six or they've got to be both be seven. So if they're seven, they each need a new home because neither of them is seven away from the other. One, two, three. So this one can... Ah, no, that can't be seven because that would repeat the seven in the column. So this one needs another seven, another cell that's seven away from it. That one, one, two, three. No, that's too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is too few. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one has no valid position. 
because it can't take a seven from there. So this, this we've actually got this. This is six, this is seven, this is seven. Um, that must be seven now. And presumably that's good. So those sevens are linked. These sixes are linked. That must be seven, obviously, because the six is in the row. Seven is off the diagonal here. So there's a seven in one of those two positions down there. That, oh, that's got to be a seven, of course. It's in the same column as the six. The seven gets placed on this diagonal. So if we so if we put a six in any of these squares, they have to reference each other because they can't reach these two squares. These are far more than six cells away from these these three cells. So which are these cells? One, two, three, four, five. None of these cells. So these these must all be sevens because none of them can reach each other to be sixes, and. Right, I'm going to just check this. So in theory, every seven in this grid sees another red seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one's okay. Um, that one's seeing that one, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, so those two are okay. These two are okay. This one. Oh, this one might be broken, look. One, two, three, four. Oh no, it can see that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that one's okay. So these two are okay. These two are okay. This one is doing double duty. It's fixing this one as well. These two are okay. This one sees that one, does it? Yes. And this one sees that one, presumably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is this seems reasonable. Um what do we do now? So we've got, we've got, well, we've got all the sevens. We've only, we've got two sixes in the grid and everything else we've only got one of. Let's look at sixes. So sixes, so this is very confusing. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So is it this this diagonal? Or oh, it can't it can't get too far along this diagonal though, because it's going to run out of room. Yeah, it's just I think it's just those squares that are ruled out by this cell here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The middle square is ruled out by this one. Oh ah, now hang on. This one sees Oh, this is this is gorgeous. This one sees the, so much of the diagonal here. It sees that one. It sees that one, that one, that one, and that one. Four, five, six. Oh, yeah. So we get to place a six. Look, this six, believe it or not, sees the whole of this diagonal. I'm not clicking very well today. Sees the whole of this diagonal up to here. That one can't be the six on this diagonal because of the six that one can't be so that has to be the six uh, now what do we do next so the, si the six can't go in any of those squares because of this six here it can't go in these squares now this six One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it only sees that one. I believe the expression I'm looking for is bobbins. Um, so this one sees. So the six must be in one of those three places, I think, in this box down here. Six, one, two, three, four, five. Can't be that one because of this six. <laughs> this is just so strange. Um, 
I don't know where else to look though. I don't think I'm getting very far with the sixes, but... But I'm not really sure what other digit to look at. Maybe eights. The eight here, look, the eight must go in one of those two cells. Oh, good grief. Good grief. Well, this is genuinely a puzzle where we can say nobody puts eight in the corner. Because if you put eight in the corner in this puzzle, it breaks the puzzle. Look at that. You can't put eight there. Now, why can't you put eight there? Well, it's because this little eight sees the entire diagonal, the other diagonal. This is eight cells away. That one's eight. So the whole diagonal is ruled out and you couldn't put an eight on this diagonal. So that is not eight. This must be eight. Oh my goodness me. So one of those two is an eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight must be off the dot. Oh no, it can still be here, can it? Or no, for the same reason, I can't put an 8 here, because that's going to rule out that diagonal. So that's not an 8. I've got the wrong pencil marking there. I want to put 8s in one of those two cells. 8s down here must be in one of those three positions. Oh, ah, now that's interesting, because... Yes, this is very interesting, because now the 8s are not on the diagonal. Um, they're not... In this box, this box, this box, and this box, I've not managed to put eight on either diagonal. So in this box, I need to achieve the objective of putting eight on both diagonals. So the eight goes in the middle of the grid. I am astonished that I was meant to look at eights here. This is just... Oh, now look, we can lock eights into one of those positions. That's not eight. Is this? I don't think these eights are far enough apart to limit this. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's no good. Ah, oh, this one maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. That one can't be an eight. <laughs> this is an eight. Maybe that gets up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It does. That one can't be an eight. That one can't be an eight. This is an eight. One of these two must be an eight now. Don't. You are kidding me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one can't be an eight. The eight must go here. The eight must go here. Oh, and we've just got two more. That one, maybe. Does that hit either of those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, six, seven. That one doesn't either on the other side. This one? No. Uh, I'm not sure if any of these eights hit one of the eights we've got pencil marked. My goodness me, what a puzzle this is though. It's so original. So now let's go back to six now. Maybe we've got more, maybe down here. No, it's not, it still doesn't look brilliant for sixes, does it? Maybe this box down there. Oh, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, it doesn't even get there. That's no use. There's this one, four, five, no. Ah, oh, that one rules out that square, though. Oh. Now, hang on. There is maybe a restriction on sixes in the middle box, because I can rule these out. This one sees that one. This one sees that one. This one sees that one. One, two, three, four. This one sees that one. 
and this one sees that one. One, two, three, four. So the six is in one of those two positions in the middle box. So ah, now we get sixes pencil marked into those two cells. Now is either of these close enough to a six that it can be one, two, three, four. Ah, no. Six must be in one of those two positions. Yes, there, look. This six sees that square, so the six must be there. Five. <laughs> um, okay, so that gives us a six in one of these two cells now. Just pencil marking normal Sudoku into this box. I don't think we... That can't be a six now. Six is in one of those two cells. Hang on, that's square. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. That cannot be a six because it would rule out both sixes in that box. This is a six. Six is in a relationship of one to two with this black dot. That's got to be a three because it can't be a twelve. Um. Now, surely then. So six, this six, what's it doing to this box? One, two, three, four, five, it's ruling out that one. I don't think anything else, so maybe the six is locked into one of those three positions. Again, I'm so sorry if I'm not um, doing this efficiently. I'm, I'm doing it as, as, as well as I can. It feels very inefficient, but it's still fascinating. Um, this one, what? Three, four, no, it just doesn't get there. This, this is not six. So, oh, one, two, three, four. No, it doesn't. It doesn't reach either of these squares and disambiguate anything. Maybe, so I've got one of those two. Can, is anything seeing one of those two that's useful? Oh, I don't believe it. This Is this one, look, this one I think is six away from both of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This cannot be a six. <laughs> this puzzle is absolutely mad. Um, which is appropriate from somebody called Madav, um, in the nicest way. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That can't be a six now. This is a six. This is a six. This is a six. And we've done the sixes. We've done the sixes. We haven't, still haven't done the eights, but we've done very well with the eights. We've done the sevens. So what on earth are we meant to do next? Fives maybe? One, two, three, four. Uh, that's not brilliant actually. Five can go in three positions there. This five is too close to this box. Five on the di ah, five on this diagonal, look. Five must be in one of those two cells. Now if it was here, this would have to be a nine. We don't, we don't know anything about nines. We have no nines at all in the grid. So I don't think we can use that. But let's see if this... Oh, look, I've got twos and fours here, though, now, and a little run here. So let's use that. We can put the fours over there, the twos over there. The twos and fours have to appear in these three squares. And the four, one, two, three, sees that square. It's like a long night's move. Um... So the four is locked into one of those two positions. Yeah, four looks more profitable actually. Let, let's check this box because four can't go in those squares. It can't go here and it can't go here. So four it belongs in one of these two positions. Uh, 
Ah, no, 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 no. Four can't go here. Four can't go here because if four goes here, one, two, three, four, four can't go here. So four would go there. Now, how do we put a four now? How do we put a four in this box? I don't think we can because the, the fours rule out those by Sudoku. Now this four sees that one and that one by the taxi cab and that four sees that one. So that doesn't work. This is not a four. This is a four. One, two, three. One, two, three. That sees that one. So this is a four. One, two. So this is not a four. There's a four in one of these two cells, look. A four. So if we look at these two fours on the central box now, we've got that one, that one, that one, all ruled out. So the four can only go in one of those two positions. So four over here is in one of these three squares. But it can't be in this one because of the sort of long night's move constraint. If we try to four there, it would rule out both of those fours. One, two, three, four. Yep, it rules it out both ways. So this is not a four. So that's quite cool because we've now got fours locked into a little box here, haven't we? So we've, in column seven and column nine, we know there will be two fours in the finished solution. And we now know that these squares account for both of those fours. So there are no fours down there. So there's a four in one of those two positions in box nine. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now look, we've got four off the diagonal here, four off the diagonal here. So on this diagonal, the four must be on the diagonal there. That's the only place it can go. So now there's a four down here. Oh, look, we can do the same thing over here though, look. We've got fours locked into row seven and row nine. So where's the four going in row eight of the grid? It can only go there. Now hopefully this, or one of these fours is gonna be, yes, yeah, this one. One, two, three, four. This is a four. This is a four. Ah, now surely, surely. Oh, is it the diagonal? Yes, it's a diagonal again. This diagonal this time, the four is off it there, off it there, so it must be on the diagonal in those three squares, so it's got to be here. That's a four now, oopsie. Um, This puzzle is just extraordinary. It's it's so original. There are sort of elements of Miracle Sudoku about how these cells interact, but every digit interacts differently with its friends. Um, so like the four form a long knight's move. And a three, if we think about it, that's going to act a bit like a normal chess knight. So it can go and see this square. So all of those squares can't be threes, look. I'm going to pencil mark those in. Threes must be in one of those positions. Three up here is a little bit limited as well, look. It can only be in one of those positions. <sighs> now... How do we resolve this? What digit is it that we're meant to look at? It can't be ones and twos. It just can't. A one is just a normal digit for the purposes of this puzzle. It has no impact on it. A two acts a bit like a chess king. 
So a two at a border would be very interesting, but a two in the middle of a cell is useless. I suppose, ah, uh, maybe that two is restricted, but maybe not if the two's here. I feel like... What am I missing here? I must. Oh, I'm. No. Oh, I thought I thought that eight was hitting that eight, but it's not. It's only seven away. Five, six, seven. Bother. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh, but this eight does it hit that one? Please. Two, three, four. He, it does. This one hits that one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. That's not an eight. The eight goes up there. The eight goes down here. Oh, now three all of a sudden. Three can't go in those squares, so it goes into one of those two. That's not a three. Three, now look, if we look at threes in this box, they're locked into column one and column two. Three in this box is locked into column one and column two. So the three in box one must be in column three. It must be in one of those squares. Ah, oh, look, that can't be a three now. That can't be a three because of the knight's move constraint. If that's a three, it rules out that by Sudoku and that by Taxi Cab. Both of these squares are a knight's move away from the three that was here. This is not three. This is three. That's not three. Three must be in one of those two. It can't be here because of the taxi cab, aka Knight's move constraint. Three is in one of those cells. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this. This diagonal, it has to have a three on it. Where does the three go? Well, this three says it's not this cell. Now this cell would automatically be okay normally, but look, it sees both of those threes. This one by Taxi Cab Stroke Knight's Move, that one by Sudoku. So the three can only go in this square. That one can't be a three because of the three here. So this is a three. That sees that one. This is a three. Three down there now. Ah, uh, nearly. Oh, this three sees that. Oh, what am I talking about? I've already got the three there. This can't be a three, I suppose, for the same reason that this couldn't be a three. That would rule out both of those squares. So the three, ah, uh, so the three must be there. So this can't be a three, this can't be a three. The three must be in one of those two cells. And this three, this three sees both of them. That can't be a three. Sees that one, sees that one by taxi cab. So this is not three. This is a three. This, that speeds back in there, that's not a three. This must, oh, that's a three, and that's going to give me a five as well from our pencil marking. This must be a three. F oh, is that, please, let one, two, three, four, five. The five can't go there. So the five has to be here by Sudoku. That's on the diagonal. These two squares have got to be two and nine to complete that box. So that square's got to be a one, I think. Those two squares have got to be two and nine as well. So that square ought to be, what's that gonna be, a five? Looks like it, that's a five. This five sees that one, that's a five. Those two squares have got to be one and nine, 
by Sudoku, just looking at that row there. Oh, and that gets a two in the inequality square. So this square has to be greater than that one. That's got to be a one. Therefore, that's got to be a nine. Now, I'll bet this nine is going to see things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, no. <laughs> um, there's a nine in one of those three cells now. So the nine, oh, that gives, oh, we could have got that anyway. That's just a two nine pair. Let's put it in though. This diagonal, we very nearly finished. We need a one and a two. Oh, bother. Is there a way of resolving that? Yes, this one, of course, that's C to two. That's a one. One must be down here by Sudoku now, this one on this box. That forces a one into that square. Look, that must be a five to complete the box. There's a two nine pair here, so this must be a one and it can be a one. These two squares have got to be five and nine and there's a five here. So the five goes here, the nine goes here. That fixes the nine and the two. That fixes the nine and the two. Um, this is a one, two, nine triple, so that should be a five and it is. Five goes here by Sudoku. One, two, nine into those squares. Nearly, there's a two in one of these. This is a one or a nine. Oh, I think I'm really close to cracking this. But it's a weird puzzle. It almost gets harder as you go along because we got the six and seven quite quickly. But after that, it was really difficult to make any progress. Um, so what do I need to look for here? I need to look for a, a two that is constraining something. Or maybe this diagonal, actually. Yeah, that nine, seeing that square, that's what I should have looked at. That would have been more efficient. So this is two nine. This is forced now to be one. This now is forced to be nine, look, by the two in the row. That's a two. That's a two. Oh, good grief. We're going to finish with a deadly pattern here that presumably has got to be resolved by a nine hitting one of these cells. Which nine is it? Uh, that one, maybe. One, two. No, that's eight there. This, no, that's too far away. That one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, that one's not enough. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, this one says that one can't be a nine. That has to be a one. That's a nine. That's a nine. That's a one. Check. Wow. Wow. What a puzzle that is. Taxi cab restrictions. That was very, very interesting. Um, yeah, good birthday present. Thank you very much, Madav. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle with it. Definitely not the most efficient solve ever, but certainly one of the most enjoyable. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.